everybody. I'm Chris. Let's go. Let's look at some uh, exciting uh, list formatting stuff. Now, as you may recall, if you were here on uh, the American Thanksgiving, uh, there was an issue with uh, some turkeys and some horses, and so the uh, the horses are still out for now, and we're going to do a lovely kind of a Christmas-based demo here. So uh, just at the uh, conference in Vegas this week, uh, did a workshop uh, with several of these guys, and one of the things we were working on was this idea of Santa's workshop, right, and coordinating elves across multiple teams with all sorts of fun stuff. But as a part of that, they're tracking the toys they are building, right? So they've got this lovely list here, you know, with various toys and some information about it, uh, along with, you know, what, how many they're supposed to build, how many have actually been built, and of those that have been built, how many have been wrapped, right? And that's lovely to see, right? That's a little bit hard to see, you know, where are we overall? You know, we could try and slap a progress field together here, maybe using the calculator column or doing some of our own fancy calculations here inside a format. Uh, but what I've done here instead is I've gone ahead and applied a tiles view format. And let's take a look at that. So what this tiles view format is doing is a couple of things, right? So it's showing an image, and this is a sample. It's called the Elf Progress Board and is available uh, as of about 10 minutes ago. So <laughs> check that out. Uh, but it's also showing some of that randomization we talked about before. Right? We can see it's uh, getting a random quote here. Uh, it's also handling, and this is important, uh, when images don't come in. Right, so we're handling that here. Uh, but down here, we've got this multi-level progress bar showing how to do that with an image, and that's neat. Um, and then we've got some other interesting items down here. Now, we're not going to go into extreme on this because we're going to move that to the next call. Uh, but the idea is I have these inline pieces here. Look at this. I can actually click this, and I'm editing the item directly. And you can actually see it's saying updated list item. But what we're going to focus on here is what if I wanted to do that quicker, right? So I want to be able to click here and actually set this to, say, 100, All right? We'll see that not only does that value get set, it's actually updated behind the scenes for the individual list item. This list item gets refreshed and redrawn with all of our formatting intact, which is pretty awesome. And we can do some things with that. So let's talk about how is this accomplished um, and how we might do the same. So if we take a look at the format, which uh, is fairly extensive, so I'm just going to do a quick, oop, that, a quick find. All right, so we're going to look for inline edit field. Oh, that's not find. Let's go with find. So we'll go find, and then we'll say inline edit field. There we go. So we have this idea of inline edit fields. And so what's happening here is we've got this quantity field, and we're just drawing it like normal. Everything here is exactly what you would expect, right? I'm just trying to show a number. So I've got the text content set to that display value. The key difference here is I've just added this one piece, right? And if I remove that, you'll see no real difference except I don't get any experience on that. And then by adding that, adding that, I now get this experience all, all done for me, right? So I don't have to do anything else to say that I want to let them edit that right here inside of my view format. How awesome is that, right? I mean, that is super, super cool. Now, this is supported across a few different column types with uh, various field editors uh, included. So if we quickly take a look at another site that's just got several column types, Right, we can kind of see that. So text field, right, we'll come in here, column settings, we're going to format this column, we'll head over to advanced mode, and I'm just going to paste one that I've got just for time. Right, probably that one. There we go. So the idea here is very simple, right? So we'll clear everything else out. We're just going to show a div, and then we want to make sure that we set an inline edit field, and we get this nice string editor, some basic text, right? And we'll save that, update the list item now, it actually save, so it uh, refreshed. And that's cool, but let's see what that looks like on a couple other column types, just so we get a, a feeling for that. All right, so if we take a look at the yes, no column, we go to advanced mode, and we're going to place that same guy here. We preview that. All right, we took away the other format, but we can see that we get a checkbox, right? So it's customizing that editor for us, so we can check or uncheck that. And the same is going to be true for a couple of these other ones. So if we look at the lookup column right next to it, paste that. We won't be able to say display value on this one. I'll have to say lookup value, give you that. And we click on these guys, we see we've got a picker here and we click that X and we actually get the choice fields from all of our lookups that we're doing here. So again, we've got these nice kind of integrated pieces. Now there are a few column types that are not listed as supported, but I will tell you right now, they are working at least in uh, targeted release. For instance, a hyperlink field. So if we come here and we paste that, we preview on the hyperlink field. Let's, uh, instead of that, let's do the DESC, so we just see the preview version of the link. 
And if we scroll over just a little bit, there we go. We can click that and we actually both get the, the actual URL and the description uh, right here. So you can see we've got nice little editors built in. Same is going to be true for person fields, multi-person, multi-choice, and so on. So this is huge. This is extremely exciting. This takes uh, list formatting uh, to the very next level, right? So this is absolutely awesome. Um, again, on the 23rd, we're going to talk more about the set value action and how you configure that for various field types where you can update multiple fields and you can use expressions and conditions and all sorts of un other fun stuff for that. And we'll do that on the 12-23 uh, call. That's December 23rd. But for now, let's just take a look. What the heck do we just talk about? So inline edit field, right? These are the supported field types officially. Um, so you got the single line text, you got multiple line text, still no rich text editing. And in fact, if you try it, uh, it's just going to bomb out your field. Uh, you can do number and date times, and of course, choice and multi-choice, person, multi-person, and lookups. Now, just from my testing, and I think this may just be a targeted release thing, so your mileage may vary. I'm also showing this working for currency hyperlink location, yes, no fields, and multi-lookups. Right. So what's missing here? So we're missing, uh, you know, taxonomy fields. Uh, we're missing image fields. Um, you know, obviously not the uh, the other types of fields that are read only. So, for instance, even though like date time is supported, if you try and put this on like uh, the created column, right, created created by or the you know created time, you're just not going to get an editor at all. Okay, so just keep that in mind, which is great because it respects everything you've got going there. Uh, but one of the really nice things this allows you to do, right? So in the case of the Elf Progress Board, right, there are times you just really want to focus on editing some things, right? But you don't want to completely customize that entire form experience, right? Just for that one scenario. So having a view that kind of enables the editing in just the ways you want uh, really helps guide and direct users just to focus on what makes sense for what they're doing at that moment, right? So the task shows the things they want to do, that view does, and then they can provide the edit experience explicitly for what they want to do. That's pretty awesome. All right, so when you're doing this, uh, you can use the at current field um, you know, inside your column formats. And when you do that, that'll make sure you just align the edit directly. Um, if you want to edit a different field, like we did with the view format, we want to target multiple fields, right? We were editing three different fields with this inline edit field. We just specify the internal name, just like you would. And then by default, you're gonna have these border styles. So what I mean by that is when you kind of hover over it, right, you get this kind of two pixel, you know, square. It's got uh, uh, two pixels of border radius around it as well. And then when you actually click it to edit, it's going to have that whatever your primary theme color is as a border. Now, you do have some customization option with that. And the way you do that is you apply these styles right here. So we've got this idea of an inline editor border. So these are all of these. And then you just add this hyphen. Make sure you note there are two hyphens at the beginning here. Um, and then you can use these like you would any other version of these, right? So if I wanted to set the border color to multiple colors, right? So um, I could do that. I could set it as, you know, red and then blue, and that was set, you know, the top and then the bottom to red and the sides to uh, blue. Or I could do all four, right? So I could spread that out across those and go for whatever I need there. And I will say this appears to only be affecting the hover experience, right? So if you change that border radius to 50% and you get a lovely oval, I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Uh, as soon as they click on it, it's going to go back to that theme primary color and it's going to hit that, that two pixel border radius, but it's still super awesome. And by doing that and keeping these hover styles, it prevents you know, your format from suddenly looking very, very different than you intended, but still supporting that rich editing experience. All right, so just to wrap up here, check out the documentation. This is fully documented up there and you can check all that out. And if you wanna go ahead and jump into set value before we get into it in a couple of weeks here, uh, the documentation is available there. And then this sample, so it's under view samples, the Elf Progress Board contains both and we have several more samples uh, that will be coming in here in just over the next week or so that also demonstrate these things. Because again, super exciting. This is a great time uh, to be using list formatting. It really, really elevates what we've got here. All right, and that's it for me. Awesome, thank you, Chris.